So welcome, Nate, all the way from Austin, Texas. Yeah, nice to have you here. Thank you. I'm not even sure where y'all are from, where y'all are right now. I'm in Bristol, England. And I'm in Sweden, in the south of Sweden, much like uh, the Texas of Sweden. I've always heard good things. He, he means the, the deep south. If, if you look on the map, there's nothing further south than Malmo. It's, it's a pleasure to be connected across the ocean. It's amazing. So, Nate, apparently you're a big fan of Angelina Jordan. So, yes, I'm definitely an Angelina Jordan fan. When did you first come across her? I, I, I'm not sure exactly. It's been at least a year, maybe two years. I came across the video of her singing the Billie Holiday song, Gloomy Sunday, Norway's Got Talent. And that was the first thing I ever saw her do. And I was just completely blown away. And I would show it to everyone that would let me. And some people didn't get into it. And I just never understood it. It's like, how can you not fall back with your mouth open? It's still one of my very favorite of her performances. It, it's in my top three as well. And um, how quickly did you go down the rabbit hole? Well, it's interesting. It took a little time. I liked her Billie Holiday style so much that I saw a few other things. Like I saw the video, I put a spell on you. I watched that and I didn't like it as much. Wow. Yeah, I didn't like it as much because I was so enamored of her Billie Holiday sound. And I saw a few others and, and one really struck me. And then I went back to watch I Put a Spell on You again. And the second or third time, and her quality is so high that I can't listen to anything more than once or twice before I have to hear it again. And then I want to hear it again. And, and I'm just blown away by it. She just keeps turning corners where she'll do something I never heard her do before. And I didn't expect that. And I was really excited to hear that other thing she does. But then the new thing is amazing. And so it took me a while to get totally caught up in her. And when I did, that was the end. I understand now that she could do a football cheer and it would be amazing. Angelina Jordan fans are so spoiled because once we hear her, we can't really easily hear any other singer. If, if you start on spam and you're suddenly introduced to venison, you can't go back to spam anymore. That's a good one. Yeah, I, I think the, the biggest thing other singers have, aside from being their own unique sound, which has its own beauty, is so many of them who write their own songs so much. And every time she writes her own song, it just leaves me hungry for more of her own songs. And she does amazing jobs on all the music that exists. And I like it as much, but I just love it when she writes her own. A million Miles just transported me. That's what I'm excited to hear more of is her originals coming up, which I think she's promised in uh, her album, which I think is coming out this year. I hope so. Pontus calls it the year of the album, and we have our fingers crossed that the album may coincide with the uh, concert. Which is June, July. Pontus and I are meeting up for the first time in person in early July in, in Norway. I'll be there for two of her concerts, and Pontus is, at the moment is going to be there for one and a half of her concerts because uh, one is definite and the other is a maybe. Flying to Norway is just a little bit of a big thing to bite off. So, Nate, you are a psychotherapist. I am. And that should give you a very interesting spin on Angelina Jordan as an artist and as a human being. And also, it should give you a lot of insight into your own rich emotional reaction to her. Yeah, I would say mostly my own reaction and maybe other people's reaction, much more than any deep understanding of her or her inner workings. One of the things that I'm delighted by her is just how simple she presents. And I'm sure she has her own complexity, but she doesn't present as this complex, driven, intense, convoluted person like so many people are. She seems so simple and to the point. She loves her sister. She loves to sing. She smiles at people. She's kind of shy. She's very creative, but I don't know. There's just a purity and a simplicity to her that I really appreciate. And I think it's going to help her live in the world with her music and stay unspoiled. I think of herself as similar to being Superman because <laughs> she has a mild-mannered secret identity where she's not very talkative and then she has a different persona where she then has superpowers 
and she goes from one to the other. And it's quite incredible. That's an interesting parallel. She also has the Superman characteristic of justice. And it's very simple. It's like justice and do what's right and be good to each other. And that's all. He doesn't have a lot of ideology or anything. It's very clean. It's very simple. Super Jordan. I, I remember, I think it was Steve Reeves played Superman in the, in the 50s uh, on television. And it was uh, a generation of motherhood and apple pie and everything was lily white. And he represented the, the fight for good. I think it, they would always say for justice and the American way, which at the time was <laughs> pictured as this very clean, wholesome, Hmm. nice sort of thing yeah Yeah. very safe you know nate i started watching your reactions uh, or rather your videos from the start with the very first one and uh, i immediately felt uh, kinship because the three of us we we really started being youtuber just because we wanted to spread the word of angelina isn't that right Yeah, I had thought of doing something on YouTube, but it was very vague and abstract. And then suddenly it was like, oh, this girl's amazing. I want to share her with people. I could just set up a camera and just talk about her. Made it very doable. And it was really nice. It was the early days of coronavirus. So suddenly I I didn't have my office. I was at home all the time working and I wasn't socializing and I wasn't out with people. And it was like, well, here's another way I can interact with people in the world. And I really enjoyed having that option to be able to share something so awesome and in a social way. Yeah, and I, I think uh, s- some people say that uh, the timing of Angelina's performance of the Bohemian Rhapsody on America's Got Talent was so unfortunate because it was right in the beginning of the COVID uh, pandemic. Uh, but I actually think maybe it was a blessing in disguise because she got the time to really reflect on, on, on what she was doing. And uh, of course, we got some wonderful covers out of it and a, a lot of good things for people that were suffering. I'm thinking about the million miles that sort of was right in the time period there. I agree. I agree very much. I mean, so many people were online than had been. Just immediately, people were home and they were in front of their computers and their tablets. And you mentioned covers. To me, just a wealth of music before she came out with Million Miles, which to me was a turning point, partly because she was right around then she signed the contract she's on now. But just to have that wealth of music, okay, there's still 50 songs to go. What am I going to listen to now? It's just astonishing that we have so much music by her and, and she isn't even known very well in America at all yet. It's just a wealth of music. It's more than most singers that I appreciate just already. And so often her sitting on a couch with a mic, not even in a studio. She's just sitting on a couch by herself and absolutely slaying some song, like like astonishing. I can't use enough big words for that. Amazing, astonishing, incredible. I, I really like her TikTok performances. I'm not saying that the TikTok performances are better than the studio recordings, but I like how spontaneous they are. And because they're so organic coming from her, I always get the feeling that she really loves to sing. And it's almost Father Christmas giving us a gift. I definitely get that sense of her being at home or she's on the street. She just has to sing another song. She's just- can't wait to get home. She's got her phone. She's going to do it right now. We're lucky that technology allows for that. The only thing I really miss from earlier days is just they're longer. I want more of her. I, I, I really like her original songs, but I also really like her covers. And for me, one is as good as the other. And when I hear her cover, for me, it, it's almost like how the song should be done. And it almost makes me aware of how art could be, how art has flexible boundaries and how art can be rearranged and how art can be redefined. So it doesn't mean that the original artist version is necessarily inferior, but it's just her imagination musically is so vivid and creative and spontaneous that it goes in a direction that never would have occurred to me as a listener. And I think many other people would say the same thing, that she's so difficult to anticipate the next 
two seconds of the song. I agree. For me, her version is just the best version. As soon as she sings it, it's not like it's better in the sense that it's based on the original. And sometimes I love the original and the original was needed for her to do it. But so often the minute she's 20, 30 seconds into the song, I'm like, it's going to be hard to listen to the other version now. And I've always spoken against that. My son once said that this new version of Let It Be was so much better than the original. And I was like, what are you talking about? The original is the Beatles. That was the song. That's where it started. But Angelina puts that to the test for me. There's songs that I never liked at all until I heard her do them. And now I love that song. There's a whole category of Angelina Jordan fans that just surf the internet looking for first time reactives to Angelina Jordan. And uh, a lot of people will sit down and say, oh, I'm a big Queen fan. Bohemian Rhapsody should never be done by anyone else other than Queen. And then people just thrive on the reaction of people. Uh, it's the same thing with I Put a Spell on You. And it's also the same thing with the Whitney Houston song. People say, you know, Whitney Houston is my all time favorite singer. And this is a little girl and I hope she knows what she's doing. And then to see the live reaction to that. There are a lot of Angelina Jordan fans who are addicted to that. I would love to know if there was a place where someone had listed links to all these first time songs, because I've done that before where I'll find a reaction and I'll go into their channel and I'll scan back to their first one. Because I, I, I also really love that first time, just all their reactions when they hear it for the first time. And they're talking about, well, I don't usually listen to young girls sing songs, but I guess I'll give it a try. And then to me, the really smart ones, the ones I appreciate especially will say, forget about her age. This is amazing. If she could be 10 years old. And they're like, forget about her being 10 years old. If she was 40, this would be amazing. Because to me, she's been that way since very early on, at least eight years old. She sounded as good to me as any grown up anywhere. The whole child singer thing, you don't need that with her. She's that good. Yeah, I totally agree. But I would definitely like to see all those videos yeah. Yeah, I wish I could capture my first time hearing her. I'd like to see my own face. Yeah, that would be awesome. And I have one favorite. That is one reactor that said, this is the new singer on the channel. I haven't heard her before. But I just recorded a reaction to Dimash. And then when the song's finished, he's in tears. I remember that one. That's, of course, a, a common thing. It's hard for some reason for me and for so many others not to be moved to tears when listening to her. And I, I can't really put my finger on what it is. I mean, I have two small girls and I'm uh, proud of her in some way. It's almost like the feeling when you get when like great athlete doing something, breaking the world record against all odds, and you get really proud of them for their sake. Or maybe it's just that it's so out of this world beautiful what she can do. I definitely feel that sense of uh, protectiveness. I told my daughter, I said, you're my best girl and Angelina is kind of my second. So if you weren't here to take care of, I'd have to look after her a little bit. She really evokes that, just her innocence and, and the beauty of her, especially when she was this tiny little creature. It reminds me a little bit of um, in 1969 when man landed on the moon. Some people could not believe it. And it's the same when they hear Angelina Jordan. They say, oh, that can't be her. It must be someone else. There were people in 1969 who did not physically believe that man could be landing on the moon. And they're just like there are people who cannot believe that Angelina Jordan can sing like she does. It is striking. It really is. I, I find it interesting. A lot of times I've seen reactors that when she first starts, they interrupt her and they say, wow, she's really young. Wow, look at the, listen to that trill that she just did. And wow, I, this is really amazing and blah, blah, blah. And then as the song goes on, a lot of people, will, they'll stop it less and they'll say less. And finally, they just won't stop it anymore. They'll just listen to the rest. Little by little, it grabs them until they just can't talk about it until it's over. And I love watching that process learn. It's like she just kind of quiets. She's like, no, no, pay attention. I'm singing now. It's really hard not to. And people who don't do that in their first reaction, they'll do it in their second one and their third one. It's like increasingly, I think most people just want to drink it in. And I had a thought too about what she said about what she does to us that brings us to tears. Yeah, I was thinking about it the other day. 
And it's really clear that when she gets soulful, I can feel it. When she sings something sad, I can feel it. When it's heartbreak or when it's happy, like above the water, and she's just dancing with this song, it moves so much emotion in me. But what I notice for myself is that it's like I feel not just more of that emotion, but I feel my whole emotional capacity more. It's, I listened to that last song I reacted to. I can't think of what it was. Yesterday was the same. It evokes such a powerful sense of feeling and depth that it went deeper than a particular emotion. I just felt more emotionally alive and awake when the song was over, more tuned into my emotional self, less in my head by far. And so more tuned into my body as well. She pulls me out of my head. I get surrounded by way too many thoughts. And she's just like, no, right there just reaches out and touches my heart with a light finger, says, pay attention, listen here. And it'll change my state. I did one with my girlfriend recently, and the state we were in before and after that reaction was remarkable. We were in a completely different mood, stuff going on, what we were going to do with our day. We did the reaction and just suddenly we were present. We were calmer. We were just more relaxed. She does that to me again and again. I have changed as a human being in the last 18 months listening to her for exactly that reason. I have a regular dose of more emotional moments and it's become a more permanent feature. I half jokingly said that doctors should recommend five Angelina Jordan songs three times a day. And I actually had a doctor who wrote to me who said, actually, he does recommend Angelina Jordan to his patients. So although I was joking, there was an element of truth to that. And one of the things which really astounds me is I could not think of any other strong emotional experience that we don't get easily accustomed to. But with Angelina Jordan, we don't get accustomed to her easily or quickly, and we keep getting that same initial reaction over and over again. And that, to me, is one of the most astounding features of Angelina Jordan. Yeah, it's amazing how you easily you can forget how good she is. Because when you start listening to her once again, it's, oh, how could I forget? Her voice is so there and so present. And still, it's, it's astounding. I've heard it said that some experiences go so much deeper than your mind, or they're so transcendent of your mind. Just another way of saying the same thing, that your mind just doesn't know how to encode it in memory. It's too direct. It's too immediate. I definitely have that experience with her. It reminds me a lot of, I've had people in school and this and that, they'll read a story and they're reading, he went down the street and this happened and that happened. And they just, like most people, read it. But if you get a really good reader for an audiobook, he went down the street. It's each word is what I'm saying right now. There's no long sentence that I'm following through. This second is what I'm saying. And I feel like that when she sings, like the moment she's in is the moment she's in. She's not ahead of herself. She's not behind herself. She is right here. And it just pulls you to this moment. And it makes it hard to remember it. How can you remember that? I can't even describe it, much less remember it. I I remember my reaction to it, mostly. I remember the sort of sound of her and how I felt when she sang. I put on reactions a lot sometimes around the house. And every time my girlfriend hears one of these songs, she's like, man, she's incredible (laughs) all over again. It's ironic that so many singers come to the profession because they think of it as a career where they can be financially secure and other singers come to it because they have a certain sense of art. But Angelina Jordan, I believe, is different again. She has extreme emotional definition inside of herself in such a way her emotional arrangement allows her to be this type of artist and for me that is one of the things which makes her really really unique well yeah and i i can relate to part of that too when i lived in this one city once that i did not like and i had a terrible job and i didn't know anybody there and i just had a miserable time there and one day i ran into this fella and we just clicked and had this amazing conversation. I realized that a big part of why I wasn't real happy there was I couldn't find anyone to have these real conversations with about things, about psychology and life and 
all these things that, that are my bread and butter. It's like I don't feel myself unless I can talk with people in certain ways part of the time. It's the reason I do psychotherapy, because I'm going to think about that stuff all the time anyway. Might as well get paid for it. And I get the impression with her that if she couldn't sing, I think she'd just blow. I just can't imagine her not singing. I, I don't think she could stand and not sing. And so we get to be the beneficiary of that. But I think if she lived alone in the woods, she'd be singing all the time. I don't think she could bear not to. I heard a, a story of one of the judges on Norway's Got Talent, Omar Bhatti, befriended Angelina after the, the show. And he ended up driving her uh, a lot. And he said that she would just uh, suddenly burst out singing in the car. And it was so good, he had to pull over and just stop and listen to it. I want to drive her around. <laughs> That's no fair. If you do, you should have a, a video recorder with you. Just have it running 24 hours a day, right to the web. Yeah, definitely. But every now and then I'd turn it off and I could have my own little private concert. She's like a King Midas. Everything she touches turns to gold. And we think of that as, as a mythical story, it's something which is not really believable, but that's what she does artistically. Well, every myth is based on some reality somewhere, so... One thing that I think is important to reflect upon is that I think most of us have a tendency to put her on a pedestal. And I think we should all think a little bit ahead before we turn a person, especially a young person like this, into some kind of uh, messiah or some kind of person that can do no wrong. I, I know a lot of people like to call her... Uh, Oh, she's from another planet and she's an angel. I personally feel that we, we must see her as what she is. She's just another human being. And that is also empowering to us because in being a human being, we have that kind of capacity. Although I'm no <laughs> singer, but still there is... In my belief system, anyway, is I believe that human beings have good in them and can do good mm -hmm. deeds and really reach heights that, that are unthinkable, really. And she's like a living proof of this. Mm. I totally agree. When I first got into her, I wrote a very short story about her being sent by the Galactic group to help humanity to move forward, to evolve. But really, it, I think it diminishes her because it's like saying, if you're an angel and you sing, you're going to be pretty amazing just because you're an angel. But when you're a human being who's singing, there's just levels of transcendence and expression and depth that have so much more significance because they are coming from a regular person who gets scared of things and sneezes. You don't think about angels sneezing, but human beings sneeze. And some of them sing after they sneeze. And some of them, well, one of them at least sounds like her. <laughs> I think it's really generous to go ahead and let her be a kid, to let her be young, to let her have struggles and confusions. Because if she has them, I can't imagine her saying, hey, everyone, treat me like a god. That's not her at all. And I, I think another piece about that is sometimes people have had a tendency to get really up in arms at any notion of criticism of any kind, down to the slightest little, you know, I, th I think I didn't like this one thing about the song, but otherwise it's the best song of my life. And then someone will write, who the hell are you to say that she shouldn't do that? I think she would say, don't fight over me. Don't argue over me. Calm down. Get along. What do you think I'm talking about here? I think she wants people to get along. So when somebody says something to me like that, I try to either respond really well or not respond because I don't want to contribute to that. And if people are upset, I understand we get upset. But I think she presents a really nice model of let's be innocent with each other. Let's, let's be sweet. I mean, she's so sweet. Where do you go today in the media and see sweet? You just don't see a lot of sweet. Sometimes I watch old movies just because they're sweet and their innocent throwback. It would be a great commodity if you could package it. I'm not talking about putting sugar in a bag, but if you could package human sweetness, that would be a great commodity. <laughs> Regarding the criticism, I get what you're saying, and I agree. Those kind of trolls or whatever, that sort of gets upset. But I do feel that 
what I'm hearing is that her fan base is a, a great group of people. And I think she has a lot to do with that because she's portraying that sweetness. So we, we all try to be really sweet. And I, I saw one comment on Facebook that said something like those trolls. I really just want to do what Angelina would like to do. I just want to give them a hug because they are hurting inside. That's why they are so nasty. When I make my videos, I try and go into Angelina Jordan mode where A, I go out of my way never to really criticize or speak badly about anyone or anything or any performance. And in fact, one time I did a video where I actually believed that the original was better than Angelina Jordan's version. And it was very complicated for me to do that video because I was aware I had to do that video while wearing two different hats. One hat, I was aware that some Angelina Jordan fans did not want to hear the fact that someone else could do a song better than her, while at the same time, objective viewers would really appreciate the fact that the original was the gold standard and could not be improved. So sometimes one has to do a balancing act. And this is also part of the reason I do Angelina Jordan. The, the main reason is because I love her music so much and I feel a sort of loyalty. But another reason is that I know if I do a reaction to her, I can basically say, wow, that was amazing. And my experience with reactions is if I go to a reaction to something I like and the person reacting it, to it really doesn't like it, I, I don't really enjoy that. I think mostly people want to see the positive reactions. And with Angelina Jordan, that's all you're going to get. I put somebody else on there I've never heard before. Well, there's one popular singer that uh, left and right people rave about this singer. I, I don't like him at all. I've listened to three songs. I could talk for an hour about what I don't like, but nobody wants to hear that. So well, I'll just do another Angelina Jordan song and I'm set. It's very convenient. One of the reasons I, I focus on her and why I try and promote her is because it's a very, very good way of promoting benevolence and kindness and generosity of spirit. And if I can do it through an artist, then it sugarcoats it and makes it acceptable and very pure and wonderful message that I'm delighted to be able to communicate through Angelina Jordan's talent. It is a useful way to do that. I really want to do just straight up videos where I talk about different things. And it's much easier to talk about someone else than just to talk. If you're just going to say, hey, today I'm going to talk about being kind. It's just a whole different flavor. But with her, it's just she makes it so easy. Yeah. Sometimes an allegory is a much better way for um, making a point. All of my focus is on Angelina Jordan. You know, it, it's nothing to do with me. For me personally, what I have received from being an Angelina Jordan fan uh, you can really just take Angelina out of the equation. She has already given me a vision of what it's like to be a great person, really. So now I have like <laughs> somebody to look up to, which is crazy because I'm like over 50 and here's a teenager. But still, it's the truth. And so that way... I can disconnect her from the things that I do in life and, and just have it for me. I don't care really what she does from now on. For me, in my head, she's a great role model, really. Of course, I would like her to keep doing what she does. I'm, I'm hoping for another 30 or 40 years at least. Yeah, of course. That's what I'm hoping for. And lots of albums with really long pieces of music that you get to just luxuriate with solos and then she comes back in again. I'm looking forward to the longer pieces with her because I just want to lean back and luxuriate. That's the word for me. She could do an album of just one song where she does eight different versions five years apart. And then we could just all marvel with how she has evolved just through one song over many, many years. That's a great idea. I would love to see her do that. Maybe she could pick something she did when she was eight or nine and just start going forward. I would love to hear an album like that. I don't think anybody's ever done that. No, that would be very groundbreaking. And the, the other thing, I mean, musically, she's phenomenal. And, and we all cannot compliment her music enough. But 
it is through her music that she communicates a certain type of emotional clarity. And she must have that emotional clarity in her to be able to communicate that. And for us, it's almost like a new term. It's almost like a new vocabulary. And that she can reach in us a, a certain level of emotional clarity that we, it's almost like we have to redefine terms. And she does it through her music. The music is the medium. I think that's where it's amazing how she touches deeper inside than emotions and deeper than thoughts. She really touches you. And it just naturally reshuffles things inside. Your sense of yourself, your sense of the world, your sense of other people just gets shifted. To me, that's the most powerful thing she does. She just touches people in a way that they always say they're speechless. And it's always funny how the mind immediately rushes in to say, oh, she's this and she's that and she didn't do this and she does that and blah, blah, blah. But they're still speechless because at a deeper level, they can't put it into words. And and we're reactors, so we try to say stuff. But you can just feel that, okay, this hit me in a way that I cannot put into words. This goes deeper than words. And my understanding of words just got affected a little bit. My ability to speak just got affected a little bit. It's a beautiful capacity. That's why Pontus and I started up the podcast so we can put into words what cannot be put into words yeah i knew a teacher once who she said that my whole job is trying to share what can't be said and i fail gloriously every day <laughs> there's an old saying uh pablo picasso this woman asked him so what does that painting mean and he said well if i could tell you what it meant i would be a writer as it is i'm a painter that's a good answer, actually. You mentioned role model. The one person that really reminds me of Angelina, or Angelina reminds me of, I went to a, a talk once, and it was a Tibetan monk. And he came out, and he's a really sweet guy, and he talked about forgiveness and forgiving the countries that had hurt Tibet and getting in touch with anger and resentment and just letting it go and opening your heart. And after he talked for a while, this one guy said, well, I have a question. In your tradition, do they believe this and this, or is it the other thing? And he said, it's interesting when you bring that up, because what comes up in that a lot is people have a lot of anger and a lot of resentment and, and what it is to forgive people and to open your heart to people and forgive. And someone else said, what about the teaching of the soul and all this other stuff from body to body or whatever? And he said, I think what's important about that is that people feel a lot of anger and resentment. And you want to forgive. And I realized after a while, every question they threw at him, that's all he had to say is forgive and open your heart and let go of resentment. And everything else was irrelevant to him, all the teachings. And I left there feeling like I want to love people more. I want to be more forgiving. That's what I came out of it with. And no one's ever reminded me of him like she does. Like she doesn't talk it. She just sings it. But it's this constant message of gentleness and acceptance that stirs me and makes me want to let go of all that dark stuff to have a cleaner life. Some people do a spring clean of their house. They have a serious, deep clean throughout their whole house, and they do that every year. But there's no internal equivalent. There's no way of weeding out all the emotional junk that you don't like. People don't have that as a framework of how they approach their inner world. But they should. They could. It's just not part of um, the vocabulary. If, if you can do it in your house, it's even more important to do it in the inside. I think that's the beauty of her presence and her presentation is that I've noticed people, especially in my field, have a lot of ideas about letting go of stuff or letting the emotion out. A lot of ideas about what it is that it takes to have a spring cleaning like that. And a lot of times all the ideas just clutter. You know, I need to get rid of this and I, I've got to let that go and I need to see it different. And there's a lot of effort and struggle and complication. Instead of the simplicity of just stop for a minute, take a breath and just let yourself be quiet and just feel how you're holding on and you don't have to hold on. You could just relax that. And she'll do that in a couple of minutes or a couple of seconds. So it, it takes you through the experience so that it's that much easier to go through it later because you just really want to. 
And if you can't remember how, you just put her on some more. I think she really guides people and doesn't talk about it that way, but that's what goes on a lot of times. Nate, thank you very much, Nate. It's, it's really interesting to understand all the complexities going on uh, through Angelina Jordan. And it, it's very interesting to have someone like yourself who has a lot of deep insights. So you really have contributed a lot to the conversation. Thank you, Nate. Well, thank you. Yeah, I really enjoyed this conversation. Well, that's good to hear. I, I feel I would be remiss if I didn't share one last thing, which is just my personal favorite of all of her music. She did a performance of What a Difference a Day Makes. I think she was eight years old. She was outside in that big outdoor amphitheater. Where did she, she have flowers in her hair? Yes. Flowers in her hair, lots of hair. It really strikes you. And to me, it's one of the most beautiful things ever sung. And I've compared it to every well-known classic singer that's ever done it. And she just nails it. Eight years old. It's just the most beautiful thing I've ever heard. So if you haven't heard that, you really want to. I can guarantee you, Nate, that we are about to show this clip at the end of the video. Nice. Nice. Thank you. Well, it's been a pleasure. I, I appreciate you all having me as, as a guest. Very thoughtful. Thank you, Nate. Thank you. What a difference a day makes Twenty four little hours Brought the sun and the flowers Uh...